There are a lot of options on any cruise, especially some of the mega ships that are out there today. This ranges from stage shows to go-karts, uh, other forms of live entertainment, or just laying out by the pool, so much more. You can also go with some things that may, uh, may cost you a little bit more, some pricey spa treatments or, or specialty dining. There's really just an endless number of things, and you can find those listed on the daily program that's uh, either delivered to your stateroom or available in uh, in a phone app. You can find a collection of these daily programs over on cruisehabit.com. We'll link to there. Uh, that's helpful. Get, you can get an idea of what to expect on an upcoming cruise. Now, there are some other great options for ways to spend time on your cruise that you won't find in the schedule, and that is what we're here to talk about today. Number one, sunrise and sunset. Now that may seem strange. You probably have a sunrise and sunset where you live, unless it's, I don't know, a different planet. Uh, but if you if you follow anyone on Instagram that cruises a lot, you'll see loads of sunrise and sunset photos from ships at sea. Because, well, it just looks cooler when you're out on the water. The colors can be amazing. You have an infinite horizon. It's really fantastic. But many guests miss this while they're on a cruise because in the morning they're getting ready to start their day or if you're anything like me you're sleeping for many hours past sunrise uh, and sunset you may miss that as you're either getting dressed for dinner cleaning up after a long day ashore or just sleeping off the fact that you woke up so early to catch the sunrise so uh, i recommend setting a reminder on your watch or smartphone you can even leave a wake-up call no matter what time of the day uh, just using your stateroom phone in most cases and you can check on what time the sun will rise or set because it's going to be different as you cross time zones and uh, you're at a different latitude than at home. This time, uh, these times will be posted usually on the uh, front page or somewhere obvious in the daily program. If for whatever reason they're not on there, you can also check the stateroom television. That's something we'll talk about in a minute. Either way, find that time, head out on deck a couple minutes before sunrise or at least 20 minutes before the posted sunset so that you can really catch uh, when, the colorful, when the colors are most impressive. It's definitely a sight to see. You don't want to miss it. Number two, pilot transfers. Sounds riveting, right? Well, it is pretty cool to watch, even though I've seen it hundreds of times, uh, maybe more. Uh, I continue to, to check it out on, on most days of, uh, of most cruises that we take. Now, if you're not familiar, at each port, there's someone, a ship captain, called a local pilot, uh, a harbor pilot. And they are on board as any ship, not just cruise ships, any larger vessel, is leaving the port or entering the port. Now, this person is an absolute expert on the local waterways, traffic patterns, hazards, sandbars that come up, construction, all sorts of things. So they're there to help the uh, the captain, the bridge crew, uh, and officers make sure everything goes as safely as possible. So when you're leaving a port, they get on board just like all the other passengers usually, and then once you're out in the open waters, they actually climb down a rope ladder on the side of the ship and uh, and then hop onto a pilot boat, a smaller boat that pulls up alongside, like literally jump from a rope ladder on the side of the ship. On it. It's really cool to watch. Uh, when you're entering a port, it's the, the, the same, but in reverse, where uh, they'll pull up alongside, hop onto a rope ladder, climb up onto the ship, and then uh, they'll disembark with everyone else. Uh, now, this isn't uh, the timing for this can really vary. However, the day or night before you arrive in a port of call, the captain will very often let you know, uh, you know, an announcement on the, the, the PA, let everyone know what time you'll be at the pilot station or what time you'll be picking up the pilot. If you get out on deck a couple minutes before that, check each side, look for that pilot boat coming because you're not going to know whether they're getting on on the starboard or the port side. You can see them on their approach, run over to that side, and then just kind of look over the edge as they board. When leaving a port, they stay on until, mm, well, it depends. It depends on the the size of the harbor and all sorts of things. In Alaska, they could be on for hours, uh, but usually, let's say, 20 minutes ballpark. Like, if you're leaving someplace like Port Everglades or Port Miami, um, once you're out in open water, that's when they debark. 
So uh, just watch out for that boat. It usually says pilot, and then you'll see them hop right on. It's very neat. I should mention that sometimes they'll actually do this not via boat, but by helicopter. Usually um, Columbia River bar pilots do this um, in Astoria, and there are a couple other places in the world. It's less common, but also pretty cool if you can catch that. Number three, an art walk. That's not a formal name, it's just what I'm going to call it. And, uh, you know, this one is one of these things you take in passively, but maybe it's better if you make an active effort to check out the art on the ship. So cruise lines hire uh, really talented interior decorators. Clearly, if you've seen the background in my videos, you know that I don't, but cruise lines do. And uh, and part of that is that they also commission and acquire great artwork. So throughout the ship, you'll find original paintings and sculptures, beautiful prints, collages, all sorts of things. Um, getting to ch checking these out can be a great way to not only enjoy the the different types of art that are on a ship, but also explore the ship itself. A lot of this artwork, certainly not all of it, can be found in stairwells. So uh, what I tend to do, and in fact, uh, this is recommended over on cruisehabit.com. I'll put a link in the uh, in the description. We have a list of 12 things we recommend you do on your first day on board, on embarkation day, and this is on it. Walk around the entire ship checking out the art. Uh, it's a good way to explore, get to know the ship, and appreciate everything. Now, more and more ships have in the stateroom a book usually like in a drawer at the desk or something, that explains the art on the ship, uh, maybe talks about the artists, where you can find the different pieces. That can be neat to take with you on these walks. If they don't have that, call up guest services, see if maybe they've got a pamphlet or something. This varies ship by ship. Uh, some ships, uh, luxury lines, even uh, I know uh, Oceana does this, they even have um, like a uh, guided tours and audio tours and things like that. So check it out. It's uh, it's really neat. And even if you don't consider yourself someone big in art, I don't, frankly, you might find some things that catch your eye. Number four, television. Now, I don't watch a lot of television on land. Uh, so when I'm on a ship, I'm definitely not endeavoring to watch a lot of television. I'm not talking about catching up on sitcoms or watching movies. Now, if that's the way you want to spend your cruise, by all means, there is no wrong way to cruise. Uh, there's a lot of television programming available on modern ships. Check it out. You, you enjoy the cruise how you want to enjoy the cruise. But what I'm talking about here are actually sets of channels specifically for uh, that ship. So uh, there are usually, eh, we'll say three to six of them, somewhere in, in that range. They'll feature, one channel will feature uh, previews or even entire recordings of some of the shows being performed on board. This is neat if you think, well, that sounds like a show that I might want to see, but I'm not really sure. You can check it out that way. Or maybe there's something that you wanted to catch and you didn't. You were doing other things. You were, you were taking a nap, whatever. Uh, you were out watching the sunset. So you can always uh, you can you can often catch the full recordings on uh, on one of these channels. So that can be pretty neat as well. Often there's another channel just for the ports that you're visiting on your cruise. Not in general, not popular cruise ports, but the cru the ports you're visiting on your cruise. Now, admittedly, often they're trying to sell you on taking shore excursions available through the cruise line, and, and that might be a great idea. That might be what you want to do. But either way, if you check out that channel, you'll get an idea of some of the sites that you uh, may want to explore on your own or with a tour when you arrive in various ports of call. On one of the channels, many ships, and this has become, I think this started maybe with some of the contemporary lines, and now I, I see it becoming really common. They'll have a morning show of sorts with uh, usually hosted by the cruise director. They might interview other entertainment staff officers. They might even interview passengers. But they, the goal of it is to bring up everything that's going to be going on around the ship that day. Uh, so... In addition to the daily programs that I mentioned that you can check out uh, on paper, on your phone, you know, the schedules change. There might be other things like we're talking about that aren't on there, or it just can be a nice reminder of what is going on the day ahead. They're entertaining. I enjoy them. And you don't have to set aside time to do this. Quite often what I'll do when I'm getting ready uh, in the morning, getting ready to head out for breakfast, I'll turn on the TV and check this out. By the way, if you ever wonder, well, how do they manage to pull this off every day? One, it is exhausting. They work very hard. And two, if you're a night owl like myself, you roam around a cruise ship at two in the morning, you'll often see them filming this in various public areas. Uh, finally, there's often another channel that will show 
uh, navigational information, right? They'll show your position on a map as well as the coordinates, um, weather, the, the weather for where the ship is as well as a forecast. There may even be a, a camera on the bow, things like that. That can be neat. Uh, they'll sometimes show a track of where, where you've gone and where you're going, time to next destination. That's a fun one. When I'm winding down, I'll look at that and see what things are, are like outside. So that's it. Four things that uh, you might enjoy doing on your next cruise that you won't find on any cruise ship schedule. Now, these are just a couple of things that I think you should check out. Um, but again, there is no wrong way to cruise. So make sure you check out those schedules and cruise the way that you want to cruise. Your favorite activity might be on a sports deck, might be, uh, might be taking in a Broadway show or doing nothing at all, as long as you love every moment of it. If you have cruise questions, remember, reach out. You can uh, comment on YouTube down below. You can reach out on Facebook or Twitter. Follow us on Instagram. Check out the message boards on cruisehabit.com. We've got lots of information over on the site. I look forward to talking ship with you again real soon.